Welcome to Crafty Beach. This is Julie. Today I have 15 of my best shore living Dollar Tree DIYs for you. Really fun like beach or coastal decor for your home. If you have it year round like me or if you just decorate coastal for summer, you're going to find lots of great ideas here. I try to choose DIYs that you can still get the items for in the store. But if they don't have exactly what I'm going to use, I try to give you substitutes as well. Okay, we're gonna get started first with the shore living. Little fish uh, clothespins. And I'm also going to use some of the shore living greenery, this little coastal pick with this adorable little seahorse on here. I wanted to kind of, I don't know what it's called, maybe a diorama. I wanted to make a little sea display inside of a frame. So I picked up one of these little um, frames with the little cactus in it from Dollar Tree and we're just gonna pop off the back. I just want the frame. It can be anything that's got like the four sides that you can pop the back out of that's gonna sit on its own. Um, I kind of liked the finish of this frame. I thought it looked nice and coastal with the wood and so I don't have to paint it or anything and that is gonna be the frame for our little ocean scene. And just making sure it can stand up on its own, and it totally can. I did notice there were some little nails sticking out um, that held the back on. So I'm going to go ahead and remove all of those with a pair of pliers. And we can start decorating this. I'm going to use some driftwood that I found at the beach trying to pick out some smaller pieces here that will fit inside the frame. Kind of a variety of different kinds, different textures. Um, this one's a little big. I'm just gonna kind of uh, rip that one in half, but I like the feel of it. I think it looks kind of cool. And you know, you could always use any kind of sticks too if you're like not at the beach. Um, just get creative. And I could think that looks kind of cool, all these different kinds of sticks, sizes, shapes. And I want to paint a couple of them just to provide some contrast. So I'm going to paint some of the skinnier ones, just a light blue color. I just mix like a Caribbean blue acrylic with some ivory to give me that soft beachy blue. And then I'm going to kind of wipe off the excess with a baby wipe, which is going to give me like a light blue stain on that. The reason that I'm going to paint some of the driftwood is just to provide more color, make it a little bit more colorful, and I'm glad I di it did. It really turned out cute. I thought we could use the driftwood plus the floral pick plus those cute little wood fish to create like a little ocean scene. I originally thought about using that coral over there too from the fairy garden, but I actually did not end up needing it. But you can get creative. You can add seashells, starfish, whatever you've got. Now, I kind of want this piece to be at an angle. And it's kind of the perfect size. So I'm just going to find some connection points where I can glue that down to the top and the bottom and also the side. I was going to do a video intro today. I've been trying to do those on my new content, but you know, <laughs> your girl has allergies and the pollen is crazy today here in Florida. My eyes, I think, are almost swollen shut. Oh, they hurt so bad. I hate it. So I'm just going to glue one of the blue ones, like kind of crisscrossing that larger one and gluing it on top, attaching it at the top and the bottom. Then this one, we're just going to kind of glue that straight from the bottom that one's going to kind of stand on its own right there, so I definitely have to give the hot glue some time to set up. I do add a little bit more there in the back just to help reinforce it. And I think that looks pretty sturdy. And then these little blue ones can kind of go up. I'm trying to replicate like kind of like a coral scene. 
I had a piece of coral that I found at the beach the other day, and I was going to use that in this, but it was way too big. So I need to pick up some smaller coral pieces because that would be really cute in there as well. Our coral here, when it washes ashore, is not real pretty, but you can paint it and do some cute stuff with it. And then I'm going to glue this one to the bottom and the side. Anytime you have like a little knot or something on that, it's going to give you a little connection point. And just letting my hot glue set up on those so that it's nice and sturdy. And I think we have a really good backdrop. We're just going to leave the back open. And now it's time to decorate with some sea creatures and some plants. So this has got like several different kinds of greenery on it. The blue seahorse one, this one has like green greenery. I noticed that the white seahorse one has like brown, uh, like a more brownish color. So I kind of wanted the green and this little blue seahorse. So I'm just going to start taking some of this. It looks like seaweed and stuff like that and start finding places to attach it. I'm going to glue it tip to the bottom, but I'm also going to glue some leaves over here on the side and just kind of trim it down too to make it fit. Some of them were a little bit too long and that looks cool. Kind of going up the side. And this one, I really like th this one. So I'm going to go ahead and use both of those. Kind of this one in front of that log. Trimming it down too. I glued it to the bottom. Also going to glue it to some of the driftwood to make sure it stays, stays upright. And I kind of like these little ones too. They just needed a little trimming. And these are pretty lightweight. So I'm just going to kind of glue that to the front of that driftwood. Kind of going off to the side. And this one too. And I think that's about it. I don't think I really need any more greenery in there. It's getting a little full. Now it's time to attach that adorable little seahorse. It's got wires wrapped around its tail. So I'm going to take advantage of that just by using those to wrap them around a piece of driftwood here and attach that on there. The wire is pretty strong keeping it on there. But I am going to like just slightly glue that down so the um, little seahorse kind of stays exactly where it's supposed to. Now the little fish have clothespins on them, which I'm not a big fan on, but you sometimes you can pop them off. I'm popping mine off with a pair of pliers. It is still a little bit challenging to pop them off without breaking them, but they're so cute. I thought two would be really cute of these little fish kind of like swimming like in a little school, I don't really have room for much more. So I'm just going to glue those to the driftwood, leaving them in that raw wood. I think that looks great against the blue and the browns. And there is our little coastal ocean scene. This turned out so cute and it was so fun to make. And you know, I have so much driftwood, so I really need to do more projects like this. And let me give you a little bit of a closer view so you can see how it turned out. It was so pretty. I had so much fun putting this together. This would look great as a larger scale project as well. You could use any kind of frame that you have or you could even DIY a frame. But the shore living greenery works perfectly for this. Okay, the next DIY, I got one of these little round signs from the Dollar Tree um, to be the base for this for a couple shore living items, but this one was not glued down properly. I didn't notice it when I bought it, but I'm going to show you how you can fix it if this happens to you. I mean, it was rather noticeable. Now, getting it like unglued enough to get my spatula under there was challenging, but I'm just using my heat gun. And I was eventually able to get it under there. I'm not going to go all the way because it was so difficult to do that. Um, I'm just going to go part of the way where I can glue that down where it should be. Originally, I kind of wanted to go all the way around and take all of the frames off and glue that on top of the canvas that I'm going to add to it. But since it was so hard to get even that little part up, we're just going to repair it and leave it in place. So I'm just going to glue that back down with some hot glue, stretching it out where it will be on the edge and not where it was before. 
you gotta look for those things. Those um, frames on those signs are really cute, but sometimes I've noticed it on the square ones too. They're not always perfect. So I'm just gonna touch it up a little bit. There is a little bit of a crack in there now. So I do put a little spackle in there to fill that up a little bit. The other thing I didn't really like about the sign was that the edges were kind of unfinished and painted kind of crazily. So I'm just gonna go in there and take a makeup sponge and some ivory acrylic and we're just gonna touch that up all the way around the edges just to kind of give this a more finished vibe. And what I wanna do is add an ocean scene to this and one of those octopus yard stakes to give you an idea, of something you can make with the beautiful yard stakes from the Shore Living Line at Dollar Tree. I also painted the front and the wood beads on the hanger with that ivory. And I think that looks pretty good. Now we're gonna cover up the wood part on there. I want to use one of the Shore Living canvases and I think we can just cut it to size. I'm just sanding around the inside of the frame because there was like a little bit of splinters happening on there just to smooth it all out. This is the ocean scene I'm gonna use. They have several different ones, but I think this one's gonna work out well. And I am just gonna remove the canvas from this. I always like to save those sawtooth hangers because those are great. You can just nail that into another project you might have. And then using a razor blade, I'm going to cut um, on the outside of the staples to try to pop that canvas off. You do have to cut a couple times on the corners because they are kind of like folded there and get that disconnected. I think I usually, you know, cover square frames with canvases from the Dollar Tree, but I thought we would give a round one to try and see how it turns out. And I think it turned out really cool. So I wanna cover just the back of it with that. I'm leaving the frame in place. So I just sit it on there upside down where I want it to go. And then feeling with a pen, I just draw around right up against the inside of the frame so I'll know how to cut this out. And I'm going for like a coastal farmhouse vibe on this. So if it's not perfectly to the edges, I think it's gonna be okay. Um, I know some people go in there with some twine or rope to kind of um, glue in between and you could totally do that as well, but I think we can make this work. I think that looks pretty good. So let's Mod Podge it down. I am gonna do a rather thick layer of Mod Podge because we are gluing down that heavy canvas and I want it to stay in place. So once I get one coat on there, I do go on there with another coat to make sure it's nice and thick. And then we're gonna just lay that on top of the Mod Podge, gluing that to the sign, which is a perfect little ocean background for that octopus. I'm just using like a baby wipe to kind of push that down, spread out some of the excess glue that might be seeping out around the edges. And I'm kind of okay with the, like the edges that don't really have any canvas. I think it's gonna make it look a little bit more rustic. Now using my razor blade, I'm going to cut the canvas. Um, you kind of have to feel where the groove is. Um, there was three grooves on this one for three boards. I'm only gonna do two, um, just to kind of make it look like slatted boards. And so I'm just trying to find that groove and I found like a little Cricut weeder was the best way to kind of find that, kind of mark it so I'll know where to cut it. And then I'm just cutting it with my razor blade straight across. I'm gonna skip like the center one and then I'm gonna do the same thing here with the one on the top. Just trying to find it, creasing that down a little bit with my Cricut um, weeder and I'm doing this while it's still wet so that I can move the canvas if I need to. Once I get like them cut into three pieces, I can kind of slide it like that up and expose that area in between the boards. And I think that looks really cool. Just trying to get that on there even. And spread that out. See how it looks like three boards with like painted um, with that beautiful ocean scene. I thought that would just give it like more of a rustic touch. Just make sure you cut in the right place there. <laughs> I did way better on the top than I did on the bottom. 
just making sure all of it's glued down and then I'm going to go over the top of all of it with more Mod Podge to help seal that down. Now normally I would distress that a little bit um, but I really liked the scene of the ocean on there so I think I'm going to leave it as is. Now this is the little octopus, the yard stake that I thought would be fun to make a little sign out of. Now normally these yard stakes are super easy to pull off, right? The little metal yard stakes um, with the little pliers, a little elbow grease. This one is attached kind of weird because it's attached to the octopus. It's also attached to one of the tentacles and I just keep bending it back and forth. Um, but it really did not want to go because it was still stuck to one of those tentacles and I was trying really hard not to rip the, uh, the tentacle off. So it fought me a little bit but I just kept working at it until I got it off. And sorry about that, my camera died there for a second. But basically all you missed is I did get it off. <laughs> and I started painting it with a combination of ivory acrylic with antique wax by Waverly. Cause I wanted to kind of have like a wood background to what we're gonna do on it. Um, and I didn't really like the way it was painted or the colors on there. I thought we could make it look a little bit better. So I painted that, that tan color. And then most octopuses are, I, I like orange octopuses, right? But I don't want it to be like bright orange. I think that's gonna be too colorful. So I'm gonna use just a chunky brush and some orange acrylic. I think this is like a pumpkin color. And I'm just gonna distress it. Cause I wanna bring out like all of the texture on the little tentacles of the octopus, his little tube feet, his little eyes and stuff like that. And I definitely want him to have orange, but I just don't want it to be bright orange. I thought that was just going to be too much. So that brown color we did first just was a great undertone, I think, to that. And I just keep lightly dry brushing that all over until I like the way he looks. I did kind of mangle that middle tentacle there when I tried to get it off, but that's okay. It'll add to his character, right? And then I was thinking, do I want it in the center? Do I want it flat? Or do I want it to stick out a little bit more 3D? It is metal. So I just need to find a way to attach it now to the canvas and sign. I thought maybe if I had the tentacles going off the frame a little bit like that, that would look really cute. And that's what I ended up doing was kind of just doing it to one side, kind of overlapping the frame for fun. But now I'm gonna need something to kind of fill the space. Um, in between and kind of make it stick out a little bit. So we're just going to use one of those little Jenga blocks from the Dollar Tree and glue that on the back of our octopus. And you're going to want to use lots of hot glue for that. Gluing to hot gluing to metal is not always ideal, but you can make it work. And then I'm going to use hot glue to glue that to our canvas. And I think this is really whimsical and sweet. We have a little octopus at the ocean. I think it looks really cute. Now I decided I wanted that hanger, the little wood beads to have a little bit more color. So I'm gonna distress it with just like a Caribbean blue color. Just kind of modeling that all over the wood beads, just leaving them attached. And it just kind of looks like they were blue at one time and they're all distressed now. And a lot of the paint has come off, but that was kind of the vibe I was going with. Just kind of wiping those with a baby wipe, just to provide a little color to the hanger to kind of match that beautiful canvas. And here it is, our little octopus wall hanging. And just an update on this, the hot glue did not hold up to keep the octopus attached. So be sure to use something a little bit stronger, like E6000, super glue, some epoxy glue. Um, you can get all of that except for the E6000 at Dollar Tree. Okay, next DIY. One of y'all told me that they also have the burlap stretch canvases in the 8x10. And I went to Dollar Tree last night and I found a whole case of them. And I swear I only bought half of it, but I wanted to buy the whole thing. <laughs> so I picked up that and an 8x10 frame from the Dollar Tree. Doesn't matter which one because we're gonna paint it. But I thought we could make a very quick, easy, short living DIY with that little sailboat wall charm from the Dollar Tree. Anytime you do burlap with like white on it, I love that for a coastal feel. 
So I just take apart the frame, pop out the glass. We're definitely not going to need that for this. I want the bumpy texture of the burlap. And I love that there are standard sizes to go in picture frames. So I just mix Caribbean blue and white together to give me a very light beachy blue. And I'm just going over this gray frame all over to make a coastal frame for it. Anytime I can frame like a canvas, I always like it better. I'm a big fan of these new burlap canvases. My last, one of my last videos, I um, crafted with the five by seven one, the small ones. I have a bunch of those as well, but I was really excited to find the eight by tens. So I'm also gonna go around the edges. This doesn't really have an inside lip on the frame, so it's super easy to paint. I'm okay if a little bit of the gray shows through because it'll add to the distress a little bit, but I do really want it to be nice and blue. So I do go over the front of it with another coat. Now I wanted to stress it to make it look, you know, coastal farmhouse. So I take a little white and a chunky brush and we're gonna do a very light distress all over just to kind of break up some of the blue. Give it that coastal farmhouse charm. Super easy to paint. Definitely, I picked up some more of these frames today because I'm sure I'm gonna need them for all of those burlap canvases that I bought. So here is the eight by 10 burlap canvas. I like these so much better than the regular canvases because I hardly ever use those for anything. But burlap is right up my alley. So it fits in there perfectly. I'm gonna try it on to see if it fits. Just trying to make sure that the paint was dry. I didn't wanna mess anything up. Now, I didn't really take the staples out of this, um, but you totally could if you wanted to get them out of the way. They weren't really in the way for me, so I just kinda of left them in there, just standing straight up. But the burlap isn't going to stay in there, so I just do a small bead of hot glue all around the inside, the edges where the glass would normally sit. And just pop our little burlap frame in there. I said they weren't in my way, and then the staples were like a little bit in my way. You might want to pop them out. It might make your job a little bit easier. But super lightweight, the burlap frame and this frame. So I don't think that's gonna be very heavy at all. And then I wanted to attach a little wall charm. These are so cute. This is the white sailboat one. They also have like, I think the seashell one I've crafted with. I love them. I don't really need the tassel and all the wood beads though. So I'm just gonna use some pliers and pop that off. And it's just gonna leave me with a really cute white sailboat that's like lightly distressed with like a little bit of wood showing through. So I thought that'd be really cute displayed against the burlap. Very simple, just like a silhouette, right? And so I'm going to use hot glue to glue that on to the burlap. Kind of centering it right in between. I think that looks really good. I was thinking about you could put the back back on it. If you wanted it to stand up, you might want to paint it first though before you put it on there because it might be a little bit dark. But I decided just to use one of those sawtooth hangers that I have left over from the canvases and just put that in the back of the actual canvas. And I can just use that to hang it. It can be all open in the back like that. And this is how it turned out. Our little burlap canvas with a little shore living wall charm on there of the little sailboat. And it would look cute, I think, with any of those kind of wall charms. They have like the shell, they have some other ones. Very cute. And you could also use the wooden frame that's new this year. Hey guys, I wanted to take a quick moment out of today's video and let you know about my private Facebook group. I have it linked below. You can find out when I post new content. I also have Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Pinterest. And my handle is Crafty Beach on YouTube. Now for the next DIY, they changed the seahorse signs this year, but I think it would still totally work for this DIY. 
Okay, I told you I love seahorses, so let's do a seahorse DIY. This is one of the wood seahorses from the Shore Living Line at Dollar Tree. Um, you could also do this on the one that is a little bit larger that has like paper and glitter on it. Um, you could probably make that work too. I always like the raw wood if I can start with that. Now we're going to use some of this a lightweight spackle um, from the Dollar Tree. And I want to kind of cover the wood and kind of make, see if I can make like a cool texture on here with this spackle. I've never really done this before and once I get it on there I really wanted to do like kind of a cool pattern to kind of make it look like a seahorse you know they have that weird kind of like exoskeleton going on and I don't really have the tools to do that but I think it still turned out really cool. So I'm just trying to put a thick layer of the spackle all over kind of making it look like a little bit more 3D. It's not going to be super um, thick anywhere, but just trying to get coverage all over that basic like seahorse shape and see what we can do. I've seen um, other crafters like do art with this. And so that kind of gave me the inspiration to try this and see what we could create. And I'm really actually happy with the final project. I think it turns out beautiful. So it's kind of like frosting. Doesn't it kind of look like I have frosted like a giant cookie or <laughs> a cake? It kind of looks like frosting, definitely. And it was a little dry, but not too bad. Once I got that on there, I do go in with a little more. I didn't think it was thick enough to really be able to texture it very much. And so I do use more of that same jar and spread out another coat of our, I guess, frosting, right? <laughs> but my consistency of mine, it was a little dry, but I didn't have to add water to it or anything. But basically, this is what it looks like right now. You can kind of see how much I have on there, like the thickness and stuff like that. Now I kind of wanted to make rows go down it like a seahorse has. So I'm just using my three fingers because again, I had no tools for this. <laughs> and I just dragged them down, creating like little channels in the um, spackle while it's still wet. And I'm gonna do it over here too on the belly region, kind of following the shape of the seahorse. Also on the fin, just rubbing three fingers down at a time to try to make little channels to go down it. Now, like if you look at like an exoskeleton, like or the 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 skin of a seahorse, they have this really cool pattern. And it's kind of like almost like a grid pattern. So I'm gonna like run my fingers the opposite direction too to try to get that same kind of pattern. And it kind of works. It kind of doesn't. So I go back and do my original channels because I found that some of those were kind of covered up when I went the other way. So this is definitely an experiment, but I think it kind of turned out cool. And then I'm going to go back and just push down like just with my fingertips on those other sections to kind of make like a modeled texture kind of all over. And let me see if I can show you, see the texture that I put on there? Kind of reminds me a little bit of a seahorse skin. So I think that's gonna work. I'm gonna go in there with my heat gun and give it a good dry. And then we are ready to paint it. It's already that white color, which is great, but I wanted to add different colors to bring out all this beautiful texture. So I'm gonna start with ivory and um, just a brush. And I'm not going for like really good coverage. Any of the areas that are down deep, um, I'm leaving them that white color that they are from the spackle. I'm just trying to get most of it covered with ivory first. It's gonna kind of seal that in, I think a little bit, make it a little bit less crusty. But I think that looks pretty good. And then I also wanted to bring out a little bit more dimension. So we are gonna distress this a little bit more, 
Once I get that dry, I'm just gonna go in with some Antique Wax by Waverly and a little chunky brush. And I'm just gonna kind of like dot that all over with a very light dotting distress to try to bring out some more of that texture. In the end, I find it looks really cool. It looks like a kind of like a concrete or like ceramic. It looks really interesting. I was happy with it. Once I got it all on there, I'm just kind of sponging that on with a baby wipe to kind of take off the excess antique wax. And just going back in with ivory if I think I've went too dark anywhere and kind of distress that with the ivory. So basically we're gonna have the white, we're gonna have the ivory, we're gonna have the antique wax, um, and then kind of came out like kind of a little bit tan. So I'm just dotting ivory back on all over to kind of add a little bit more color. And it's really bringing out that texture, I think. So that is, I'm pretty happy with that. Now I want to also display this on a sign and I will also want to use one of the Shore Living Sand Dollars. And so I, while I have my paint out, I'm gonna go ahead and give it the same finish by painting the little sand dollar with the ivory acrylic first. Give that a quick dry. And then I'm gonna go in and distress it the same exact way I did with the Antique Wax by Waverly, just by dotting it all over to give it that same texture. That way they will look very coordinated together. So I'm gonna go back with some ivory after I do the Antique Wax, just to brighten it up a little bit and just sponge out with a baby wipe as well. And I think that turned out so cool. I love that finish. So now that I have both of those done, I want to display them on a Dollar Tree sign. I'm going to use this like medium wood color one. These are kind of new at the Dollar Tree. They have like the slatted wood. I think they look really pretty. And I think that ivory is going to look really good against the wood. But you could use any of the Longshore Living signs as well. I just really wanted this wood finish. I really want to go with like a neutral color scheme on this one. And so I'm just gonna go ahead and remove the hanger. Um, don't really like how they attach their hangers. I like to tie mine on the front. I find they hang a little flatter. So I'm just gonna go in there and cut off another piece of twine, Dollar Tree twine. I am going to hot glue the tips to make them easy to thread through the holes. Come from behind and just tie a knot in the front, which that's how I like them. I'm just gonna burn off the fuzzies too to clean that up a little bit and do the same thing here on the other side. Now I wanna also use that twine on the bottom since this is kind of a long sign. Um, I do have, it's plenty of room to do like a little jute twine wrapping here at the bottom. And I like to do that with long signs. I think that looks really pretty. So I just hot glue the twine to the back and just kind of wrap that around until I'm happy with it, kind of crossing um, through it a couple times too, just to finish off the bottom of the sign and then hot gluing that to the back and trimming that down. Now it's just a, basically all I have to do is attach the seahorse and the sand dollar to this. And this was so fun to make and I just love how it turned out. It's definitely unique. I thought the sand dollar will look good on top and then that beautiful seahorse that we made. I love that. I might have to give that a go. I might have to get some tools though so I can kind of make a texture like I wanted to, but I think this works. So I put hot glue all over the back of our little wood seahorse and then just kind of center that on my sign. It's okay if his nose veers off a little bit and glue that down. And then I just need to glue down the little sand dollar as well. Center that at the top of my side. I'm not gonna add any words or anything to this. I think the silhouette of the seahorse is beautiful on its own with that beautiful texture. I did wanna add a little decor down here to the bottom though, the twine. And I have some of these little tiny starfish. I buy these on Amazon. I always have these listed in my um, Amazon shop, which is listed below. Um, sometimes you can get some bigger ones that come with the small ones. They're all in one package usually. 
um, the tiny ones and the size, but I'm going to pick out three of the kind of bigger ones and just hot glue those on there. If you don't have those, you could always do seashells or whatever you've got, something a little in the smaller size for that. But the color works perfectly for how we painted the little sand dollar and the seahorse. And this is how it turned out. Hopefully you can see that beautiful texture on there. It looks so cool. I love this. I actually have it hanging in my master bedroom. It looks fantastic in there. And I think it would work with a little bit smaller seahorse they have this year. Okay, next DIY. This is going to be two DIYs. We're going to do a starfish and a shell stepping stone DIY. Now, I know a lot of you guys have been asking what to do with these, and I have been brainstorming. I wanted something to make a frame with, and I couldn't figure out anything that was going to work that would be strong enough to hang a stepping stone to a wall. But I figured out these would be perfect. The little two-pack of the small wire wreath forms from the Dollar Tree upside down would form a perfect frame that we could attach to the shell, to the, to the little um, stones. Um, I was really worried that nothing would work um, and I wanted something that would be easy to hang and it's going to frame it out. So I'm going to disguise all of the wire on there with Dollar Tree brown rope. I just kind of start here on the middle one. You could always do the back one if you wanted. I kind of skipped that one. It's going to be kind of under the stepping stone and just gluing that around the wreath form. We're going to get all the way around and then we're just going to keep going with that same piece of Dollar Tree rope and it doesn't really matter which size I don't think of the brown rope that you use whatever you've got and I'm just using a whole package can't remember which one this is I think this might be the thicker one and I am going all the way around when I get to the edges I'm going to kind of like overlap it to the bottom part of the wreath a little bit just to cover up the wire so you can't really see it on the sides, but I'm just going to go ahead and use the whole piece of rope. And we have a little rope frame for these. I was thinking, you know, gosh, I can make a table out of them, but it wouldn't be a very smooth surface. I have been brainstorming because I found a bunch of these little stepping stones at my Dollar Tree with the Shore Living line, but I could not think of what to do with them besides using them as stepping stones. Um, some of you guys have said that you use them like sitting them in like large plants on your patio. That would be super cute too. And I also picked up some because I thought we could also use them on like a beach or a coastal tear tray because they're not too big. So I'm just going to do the same exact thing here with the other little wreath form. And those were a great value because you get two of them for $1.25 at Dollar Tree. And I'm going to do the same thing. I just started on the middle wire. Going to use the entire rope, kind of sandwiching the bottom layer around to kind of cover up the wire from the side. And I'm going to actually just hang mine with the wire reform um, on the wall, but you could always attach a hanger at this point too when you've still got like exposed wire there. I was thinking about even wiring down these, but they're not that heavy. So I think this is gonna work because I've got lots of rope and wire that I can attach the stepping stone to. So I'm just using hot glue and going over the rope and the wire, pushing that down inside the little rope frame it's the perfect size and the rope kind of comes up around the edges since i used it upside down remember um to kind of more like it kind of provides like a little bowl to sit the little stone down into just trying to clean up a little bit of my hot glue mess here on the back but i think that's gonna work it seems really sturdy so we're going to go ahead and do the same thing here with the other one. I think these are so cute. The starfish and the seashell. I love the colors. And I like the way that they look with the brown rope as well. So I'm going to hot glue this one to the wire and the rope as well. I'm trying to clean up any extra hot glue we have there. Now I do want to kind of make the back look a little bit better than that. 
And I thought if I added something to the back, I could maybe make it even more secure because I definitely don't want these falling apart. Haven't decided if I'm going to use these indoor or outdoor. So I'm just going to use some of the Dollar Tree burlap uh, that they have in the Shore Living line right now and just cut out like two pieces. And that'll be large enough for the back of each one of these little stepping stone pieces. And then I'm just going to hot glue that on the back. So I'm going to hot glue it to the rope, the wire, and the stone. Kind of securing everything together, but also giving it a more finished back. And you know, I said I was going to use the wire wreath form to hang it. I still am able to do that through the burlap. It was really no problem at all. Had a very strong structure. But again, you could um, put a hanger on there if you wanted to. Twine would work really well if you wanted to do a loop. Once I got them all glued down, I just used my scissors to trim that off. I don't want any of that burlap to really be visible from the front. So I try to go as close to the rope as I can and making sure it is all good and secure. And it doesn't have to look perfect. It is the back, but I think that is going to serve a purpose, help secure them in the little rope frames. And I think this was a good solution. What do you guys think about our little stepping stones that you can hang on a wall now? Actually, they'd be really cute to display like that kind of anywhere. And here is the, the little starfish in the wreath form made out of rope. And I was really happy that I found something the right size because even like the small wood signs and stuff like that that they had at the Dollar Tree, everything was a little bit too big. And I really didn't want to just glue it to something. I kind of wanted to glue it in something with sides like this. So here is the little blue seashell one. The colors are perfect on these. I don't think they really need any painting or anything. I think they're ready to go for a coastal decor. Okay, next DIY, you guys have been asking me to come up with something for the mermaid wreath tail. So I'm going to make this actually for my Florida room. So I want to do it fun. I, I found this great burlap at the Shore Living Line 2, which is the mermaid scale. So hey, it only makes sense to add some mermaid scales to my mermaid tail, right? Now... I was worried about like kind of smoothing this out, getting all the wrinkles out on it. And I, I actually um, end up putting these on upside down and I don't notice it until I'm completely done with the project. So don't call me out. I realized it. I realized it, but too late. <laughs> but that's okay because I'm going to hang my mermaid tail upside down anyway. So I don't think anybody's really going to be able to notice it. But this is right here is where I should have stopped. Because see, the fish scales should have technically went the other way. But that's okay. We all make mistakes, right? So I'm going to cut out a little bit smaller of a piece here. And I ironed out all the wrinkles just to make it easier to work with. And then I won't have any wrinkles in the final project. And then just simply hot gluing that to the top. Um, with a little extra left because I can always trim down any extra fabric when we're done, done making this. Now it does like cave in quite a bit there um, inside the tail, but this fabric is flexible enough that you can kind of do that downward curve with it. So I'm just gluing it onto the squiggly lines, also then gluing it to the sides. Now, I've used burlap behind wire reforms like this at the Dollar Tree before. Usually, I just go in from the front with some rope. And, you know, it, 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 the glue kind of comes down and catches the fabric. But since I'm needing to do like this concave shape inside there, I really kind of had to do this as a separate step. So just kind of working one section at a time. I just add hot glue all over the wire. I don't want to use too much because I don't want you to be able to see it in the final product, but pretty easy. Just smoothing it down there inside the tail. Now I'm going to do something different for the tail fin. So that is probably good right there. And I can start cutting some of the extra fabric away. 
Now you're gonna have a little bit of a hot glue mess. You can usually take care of that with a little bit of heat from a heat gun or a blow dryer. But I'm gonna go ahead and start trimming this up. This area at the bottom was a little tricky um, where it comes to the tail fin right there, um, getting that covered and glued down. But I'm just gonna give it like a trim just as close as I can get to the side of the wire. I will be covering the wire, um, so it doesn't have to be perfect, but I do want it catching. Now this was my plan for the tail. I found some of this glitter cardstock at the Dollar Tree and it's that same beautiful color of teal. I think this is gonna look perfect in my Florida room. I was a little worried cause it's paper, but it's super glossy on the back and glitter on the other side. And I'm gonna be hanging it on a wall that like won't get wet or anything like that. So I think it's gonna work. It's heavier duty, duty than I thought it would be. So I just turned that over and I'm just gonna trace out the shape of the little mermaid tail fin on to the glitter paper. You could always use some of the sequins if you can find some. I already used all of my teal sequins. Um, I've been finding that at the Crafter Square at Dollar Tree. That would be really cute too. Or some of their glitter vinyl would work too if you want to do a sparkly tail. When I get, once I get it cut down to size, I'm going to just simply put hot glue all over all of the wires of the reform, trying to act quickly so my hot glue does not set up before I get it on there. And then just glue that on. I don't really want any of that to be hanging over too much, but just like the fabric a little bit because we're going to be covering all the wire parts of this with just some Dollar Tree rope. This is the one that I ended up using, uh, the white one that is a little bit thinner. I think this is the 11 foot white nautical rope from the Dollar Tree and it did a good job. At first I thought about using the brown rope, but I thought it would kind of match in with the burlap a little bit too much. And I wanted a little bit of a contrast, which is why I went with the white, but I'm sure it'd be cute either way. If you guys recreate this, you'll have to be sure to share it with me and others in my Facebook group. I always love seeing what you guys come up with. You guys are so creative. So I'm gonna start with just the squiggly lines on the tail gluing that on and then cutting it off once I get to the end because I will be eventually going around the whole thing with rope. So I wanna cut it a little bit short so I have room for the rope on the sides. But we're just gonna do that all the way down with a little squiggly lines, kinda of just working one section at a time. And that's why I went with the skinnier white rope instead of the thicker is because I thought it would be easier to get around all of these little squiggles right here. And, you know, I know a lot of people have done this mermaid wreath form with like the deco mesh and they do have the shore living deco mesh if that's your thing. I'm just not a big fan of the deco mesh. I don't really like working with it. I don't really like how it, how it looks in the end. I'm just not a fan. So I always try to find a little bit different method to deal with these little wire wreath forms. And this was really fun and cute. And I have a couple of these, so I'll have to try to do several different versions of mermaid tails for you guys. I was thinking about putting two back to back and you kind of have a 3D tail. That would be really cute if you needed it for like a tail decoration or something. And my camera died right there, but all I did was just glue a piece onto each one of the stripes of the tail fin. And now we can just start doing the outside. I thought about switching up to the thicker rope for the outer, but I decided this looked pretty good. So I'm going to go ahead and stick with the same skinnier white rope that we've been using before and just gluing it right on top of the wire reform, which is going to hide that. I know some people like to um, leave the wire exposed, but especially with the hot glue that I had to use to attach the things to the back, I really kind of want to cover that up and the rope gives another fun beachy coastal touch to this DIY. So just finishing up this last side, 
and then I can just cut and glue down the final corner. Now the only part of the wiry form that still needs to be covered is that little part like between the fin and the tail. So I'm just gonna cut a little piece for that. This one was a little tricky to get it in there, but we're gonna make it work. Just kind of going over that original like curved shape there. Now all I need is a hanger. So I'm just gonna cut some twine. Um, this is just some Dollar Tree pretty twine, but I'm just gonna tie a knot and just make a simple loop hanger for one side of the tail fin. That way it will hang cool kind of to the side and upside down. And maybe I'll get away with those upside down mermaid tail scales, right? I didn't notice it until the next day and then I was like, oh my goodness. I put those on upside down. So silly. And let me show you how this looks. It turned out really cool. They have changed up the shore living burlap this year. I haven't seen the fish scale in a while, but I think really any kind of burlap would look good back there. And the mermaid tail reform is not necessarily shore living. It's more crafter square. So you can probably find it there or with the other like reforms, depending on how your store does it. Um, hey guys, I wanted to let you know about my new website. It's craftybeach.net, brand new website to showcase off my DIYs. Every time I post a video, I'm going to go on there and do a blog post of the video. You can find the video you're interested in and click on it. If you go down, I'm going to have a photo of all of my DIYs that you can then pin on Pinterest so you can remember that you want to recreate that. You can go down, find the corresponding video to show you exactly how to make it. I am going to have it organized by season to try to make it easier for you guys to find stuff. And I also have a link to my Amazon shop for all of my favorites that I get on there. And I even have a link to my Etsy shop if you want some of my fun crafting memes or printables for sale. So be sure to check it out. I'm really excited about this new website, craftybeach.net. Remember it's not.com, it's .net, and I'd love to see you over there. Okay, up next we have a starfish display box. Um, they have lots of different kinds. I'm going to use one that is an actual starfish that I got at my antique mall for $2. Just because I love it, I think it's pretty. But if you can't find that, you could always use one of these little starfish dish from the Dollar Tree. Or maybe even the smaller one as well. You could probably repeat it too if you had more than one of them. But I want to do like a display of four starfish. This one is actually a hook, but that's no big deal. We'll just take the hanger off the back by unscrewing a couple of little screws. And we have another a little variety of starfish. So this is my inspiration piece. I want them to look real like that, like bleached out like starfish. So that is the goal. Right now they're wood, ceramic, all different things. So I'm just gonna go in and paint them all ivory with some acrylic paint. It is going to require several coats of acrylic paint to get good coverage on these, um, especially the ceramic ones. But if you were using a chalk paint, you might be able to get it all in one. But that one at the top there that I was just painting is my favorite, the one with all the texture on it. It's so pretty. But I, I'm not a big fan of the color of it, the blue. So... I'm just going to go over them until you really can't see any of the original ceramics like shining through. And I want them to kind of have that same like uh, matte finish that that real starfish has. And cover up any writing or anything that was underneath of it. That one had some lines on it. Then I go in with some antique wax by Waverly and just kind of dry brush with a chunky brush very lightly just pouncing all over the top of the starfish to give them a little bit of color and texture. And then just following that up with a baby wipe. I don't want to make them too dark because the original one is mostly ivory, but I did want to bring out a little bit of the texture on these, which is why we're distressing with that. And this one's got like tons of texture. So I kind of switched up to like a makeup sponge to try to 
pick up all that texture on that one. I thought that might work a little bit better for that one. And this one's got like a lot of raised areas too. So just want to bring them out slightly, but I don't want them to be super brown like that. So I do go back in distress with my original ivory color, kind of all over to lighten those back up. And hopefully they look similar to my inspiration piece because they're all going to be displayed together. I wanted it to look like a fun, like little starfish display, like you would see like at a, muse a shell museum or something. So I'm going to use a four of these little wood boxes. They get these in every year. This year, um, my store has these with like the Mother's Day stuff, like as soon as you come in the store. But this is the larger size. You know, they usually have them nested. They have like three different sizes, I think. These are the big ones. I had to go to several Dollar Trees to get four big ones, but I definitely wanted four of them so I could display them all together. Now they have these little metal tabs on the front and the back. I don't remember them having them on both before, but maybe they did. So I'm just going on all of them and removing the metal pieces because that will get in the way when I go to build like a little shadow box with these. So I just remove all four of those. Super cute, I love these boxes. The only thing I don't really like is the unfinished wood on the very front of those, but I'll show you how I deal with that. And they do have a pretty wood background, but I want it to be burlap behind the starfish. So I'm gonna use um, one of these little burlap bags from the Dollar Tree. You could always use some of their burlap they have now at Dollar Tree. They have the big fabric rolls. They have the smaller like ribbon rolls. I really like crafting with these bags though because they have like a plastic coating on the back which makes them really easy to cut without fraying. So I just cut the front and the back off of the bag so I would have like some sheets that I could kind of cut down to size. And one bag is definitely enough to go over the back of all four signs. I kind of cut down three sides like um, pretty good and then just kind of put an ink pen in there to kind of figure out my size on these. And if they don't fit, you always might need to trim them down a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and try to cut some multiple at a time here. Probably can't do all of them. But just using one as reference, cutting those down, I just need four little pieces of burlap. And this turned out really good. I wasn't sure because my starfish were all kind of different shapes and sizes, but it kind of works for it. It kind of makes it look cool. So there is our four pieces of a burlap. Trying to get them all trimmed down about the same size. And then we can just attach those to the back. If you wanted to leave the wood back there, it'd be really pretty too, but I really love the burlap behind like starfish, seashells, any of the bleached sea creatures. I think it looks really coastal and fun. And it's just another little texture. So I just put down a rather thick layer of Mod Podge and glue that to the back, kind of smoothing that down with a baby wipe that can kind of wipe off any excess glue that seeps out. It, it does dry clear, so you don't have to worry about it too much, but um, I used a rather thick layer just because this does have that plastic lining on the back. I wanted to make sure that it was secure. So we're just gonna go around and Mod Podge the back to all of these. I thought it would be easier to do this at this point before I get my little shadow box all put together. And I made this where I could display it a couple different ways. Um, you're going to be able to like stand it on its side if you want to display it on a shelf. But I also attach a hanger to the back of it so that I can hang it on a wall if I change my mind. It's definitely something coastal and fun that I can use probably in any of the rooms in my house. I think I have a coastal theme in every room now. <laughs> and I'm working on decorating my Florida room. But my first piece I put out there fell off. We've been having some really terrible storms. Lots of tornadoes and stuff like that in the area but very high winds and oh, man, I guess I'm going to have to like drill the art pieces into the actual side of my house. So 
this is how I deal with the front of these little boxes. I just use a makeup sponge and some acrylic paint that I just painted this very light beachy blue. And I'm just going to go over the very front. I don't want like full coverage. I want some of that brown wood showing through because it's going to give it kind of a little bit of a distressed feel. Just making sure I don't get any bleeding along the inside or the outside with those as well. But super easy and it adds a little touch of color to the piece as well. Now to attach them together, I'm simply going to use hot glue. They are very square and the same size, so they match up really well. You could always use wood glue if you'd like, but I use the Gorilla Glue um, hot glue and I seem to have pretty good luck. And I'm going to do the same thing here with the other two. So we have two of the two uh, boxes and then we can put them together by gluing them together with more hot glue and see how square they are. You don't really have to use any clamps or anything. Um, just got to give your hot glue a little bit of time to set up. And there is our shadow box. It's a perfect display for these little starfish. I'm going to kind of fill up the boxes with these kind of like spread them out see what I kind of like where doesn't really matter super cute and, and now I'm just going to simply hot glue these to the burlap isn't this original starfish really pretty there's this um coastal store in my antique mall that sells tons of shells and stuff like that and uh, I usually cannot afford most of the things they have because they're already like built or put together. But for their starfish and their like shells and stuff like that, really good value. $2 for that little starfish. And this is the white ceramic one or it was white ceramic before that we painted ivory. And this one was the little wood one on the hook. And just going to simply hot glue all of those down. That one's a little smaller, so I kind of center him in there. And my favorite one, this one used to be the blue one, just with a bead of hot glue all around the edges to make sure these stay in there. And isn't this a fun little coastal project? I think it's so cute. It would look good, I think, with any kind of coastal or summer decor. And that is how it can stand up on its own. Pretty good. I just wanted it to be versatile. And I have a lot of those little sawtooth hangers left over from the Dollar Tree canvases that we've been using for DIYs. So I'm just going to pop one of those on the back as well. So there is our little starfish display box. I love it and I think I can display this year round in my home. And this would be really cute too. If you you didn't have to do all starfish, you could also mix in some sand dollars or large seashells, whatever you've got. But I kind of like the idea of having it be just different types of starfish. Okay, next DIY. This one is so cool. I'm going to use one of these anchors from the Shore Living line at Dollar Tree. You can use either this one with the starfish or the one without. They're about the same size. I saw a fantastic wreath on um, Etsy. And let me look up the name of that person on Etsy because it was incredible and I had to recreate it. Okay, I found it. It's called Ocean Inspired Design. Um, on Etsy and I saw it and I had to try to make one with Dollar Tree supplies. So I will post a link to their Etsy shop to the listing down below if you love it too, but you don't want to make it. You just want to buy it um, and support that Etsy channel because I loved it and I just had to try to try it myself. So I want to give a huge shout out to them, but definitely check out their Etsy. They have some beautiful stuff. Okay, so what I did was just pop off the little starfish that was on there. It just fell right off. It was so easy. And then I'm using the little bottled shells, the real tiny little cone shells. You know, I thought those were the smallest ones I have. And so we can make this work. I already have a starfish that came on it. So I'm going to go ahead and put it right here in the bottom. 
And what I want to do is try to encrust this little anchor with shells all over. Now, I was really worried about what type of glue to use. I didn't think hot glue was going to hold up on my front door outside in all this Florida humidity. So I thought I would try tacky glue. I've had a lot of luck before using the pebbles and stuff like that with a thick layer of this tacky glue from Dollar Tree. And you know I always try to stick with Dollar Tree items, so... We're gonna give it a go. I'll keep you posted. I've already got this hanging in my front door, so hopefully it holds up well. I was trying to think, I kind of wanted to use like some silicone or something like that, but I just didn't have anything and I did not really want to go to the store. So I'm just gonna start sprinkling those little tiny shells all over. These are so tiny that I don't use this size very often, but I thought it would be great for this because you can just sprinkle it on there. And as you saw, I did a rather thick layer of the tacky glue first and just making sure they're all like pushed down into the tacky glue. And we can keep doing that. Now, it was a little trial and error with this because I've never really encrusted something with shells like this before um like this so I thought we'd give it a go I'm gonna go ahead and do the middle and the other side too just putting a nice thick layer the tacky glue works well for me because it's so thick and it dries clear so I think this is going to work well so far so good so I'm just going to keep sprinkling, just trying to cover most of it. Um, it is that raw wood underneath, so around the edges and stuff, if you're going to be able to see that, I think it's going to be fine. And I thought I wanted to leave the raw wood because I thought the shells would glue better to it um, rather than trying to paint it or stain it or something like that first. And I'm really not doing any kind of a pattern. I am just grabbing the shelves from that bottled shelves. I like to organize mine in one of those little toy organizers from uh, the Dollar Tree so I can get to them a little bit better. And so I'm just going to keep moving along the anchor, just putting down more tacky glue and sprinkling the shelves on. I'm going to go ahead and cover up the holes on the side of the anchor because I'm not going to use that. I'm going to use like the little circle in the top for the hanger, kind of like what they did on Etsy. But I'm going to go ahead and cover that part with shells too, everywhere I can. And it was this part was actually really easy to do. Now I got to this part and I was thinking I'm probably going to need like more glue, right? So I was thinking, you know, can I put tacky glue on top of this since it dries clear? It did say it dried clear on the package. Now, this was kind of a mistake because when I put it on there and start, you know, trying to spread it out with my paintbrush, you can see all of my shells are moving around because I did this before I let it dry. I shouldn't have done that, but I already had it on there, so I kind of had to make it work for that section. But I was like, you know, I need to like let this set up a little bit. So what I did is I dried I dried it with my like heat gun and then I actually put it in the freezer to cool it off because it was really hot and it set up really nicely. You can see how much easier it is to glue on top with the tacky glue now that I actually let it dry first. So I just go over all of it with more of the tacky glue. I usually use that spray adhesive, but since this is going on my front door, I really thought I needed to try to pull out the big guns with this. Now, this is the wreath ring that we're going to use. This is the large 18 inch one from the Dollar Tree. It's not going to give me that round like you would get from like a pool noodle, which is more like what hers looks like hers looks like you know an actual foam reform but they don't have large ones like that from the dollar tree so we're gonna try it with this and see if we can make it work and i'm gonna use some dollar tree burlap i love these burlap rolls if you're not lucky enough to find this one um you could also use the burlap ribbon from the dollar tree as well or you can get burlap just about anywhere I used to always get mine at Walmart before I was able to find it at Dollar Tree, but I find it really hit or miss at Dollar Tree. I think people like to wipe it out, but I love it because it has that nice finished edge on it, and I think that just helps keep things look cleaner. So we're just going to simply wrap this around 
kind of looks like what they did to theirs and hers looks like a burlap and rope like life preserver or life buoy and so that's what we're going to try to do with this one and then we can hang that little shell encrusted anchor down in the middle of ours as well I usually, you know, try to find inspiration for projects. I do not like to copy projects, but when I saw this, I really, really liked it. And I was like, you know, I bet I could do that with Dollar Tree Supply. So I'm just going to try to dupe it if I can. So that's how far one of the package goes. Goes pretty far, right? So I'm going to start another package by hot gluing it on to the back and then keep wrapping. And you won't really even know where you started and stop. Just have to let the hot glue dry a little bit there to secure that in place and keep wrapping all the way around. And we have our little burlap reef. So that step's done. That was pretty easy. Now the next step, it looked like they use like white nautical rope. Um, for like the four parts of the life, I always call them life preservers, life buoys. And so we're going to do a, something similar. I'm going to use the six foot white nautical rope from the Dollar Tree. And we are going to wrap that around. So I'm just going to get it started by taking the tape off the end here. And I'm going to start by just hot gluing that to the back. I'm going to start here because that's kind of where we started and stopped just to kind of cover that, seal it all in a little bit and hot glue that to the burlap on the back. And then we can just simply start wrapping this around. This was such a cute design. I've made several of these like life a preserver or life buoy um, reefs over the years, um, but I've never made one exactly like this. I really, really like the design. So I'm just wrapping them. I'm just wrapping it I'm not gluing it or anything like that I just glued the end and then I just trying to feel about how many I want to go I think eight is going to be really good for the size of mine I did try 10 which is what it will look like with 10 and I thought that was maybe a little bit too much so we're going to do with eight so now I'm just going to cut it here on the back and glue that end down as well now, since I am kind of gluing those in place, I do want to get them on there kind of like equal distance from each other. And that pretty much took an entire six foot um, rope from the Dollar Tree. And so I'm going to go ahead and start a new package. So four packages of the white nautical rope to the, do this large reef and two packages of that Dollar Tree burlap. So I'm just going to go straight across and loop it around eight times, hot gluing down the ends, trying to like do it in the same exact place that I did it on the other side to try to help with my spacing. And that looks good. We're gonna hot glue that down. And make sure both ends are secure. So now we just need, I've got both sides done there. I just need to do the top and the bottom and we're going to do it exactly the same way. So about halfway between those, I want this little section to be. And we're just going to simply hot glue that down and start wrapping this around. Hey guys, I had the craziest thing happen to my channel the other day. I was on Google Images and I searched like coastal something, I don't remember. And I was looking at like Google Images to try to get an idea for something. And one of my profile pictures came up for one of my coastal videos. And it kind of made me smile. I always like it when I see my content in Google, you know, search. And when I looked at it, it did not say YouTube underneath of it. It said Ganjing World, which I guess is kind of like maybe a copycat YouTube. And um, I clicked on it. It took me to a video, which was my video. And it was loaded with a channel called DIY for the Beach, where someone illegally downloaded hundreds of my coastal videos from here on YouTube and uploaded it to their channel 
DIY for the beach is what it was called over on Ganjing World. And even my profile pictures and everything. I mean, that's why I detected it because it had my profile picture and I recognized it, right? And I had to go in and copyright strike all of those videos, like hundreds of them. Doesn't that make you mad when somebody steals your stuff and tries to market it as their own? I was so upset that I did con contact the copyright department there and told them this was a major problem. And within the next day, they took down the channel. They took down all of the videos. So we solved the problem. But holy cow, how crazy is that? So if you see my content out there anywhere and it's not me, be sure to let me know, okay? Okay, so I need to attach the anchor. I just took some twine, tied a knot at the end, and I thought I would just loop it over the knot like that to hang it down inside the a little reef, kind of like that. I wanted to hang it with two strings like that so it would hang even, like dangle down inside, but I kind of want the knot to be hidden back behind the reef. So I think that is going to work. I'm just going to hot glue it back there so it kind of stays in place, right? And then it looked like they used rope for their hanger and I think that would be really cute as well. Like the brown rope from the Dollar Tree. So I'm gonna try to do that too. So I just like, I measure it out. I kind of make mine a little bit too long, but that's okay. It's better to be too long than too short, right? I'm gonna take it and tie it together like that and then reverse the knot. I always forget what this knot is called. It's like used a lot with nautical designs, but you basically reverse it and you tie it on top of each other like that. It provided a nice like little slip knot, but you can kind of tie it whatever way you want. And then I'm going to string that around my anchor so I can kind of loop that around um, and tie it kind of like I tied the anchor on there. Like that by pulling one under the other, hiding the knot kind of behind the back just like I did before and make a big loop. Now, as you can see, that was probably a little too long. So what I did was I untied it, retied it, cut it off a little bit shorter and I like that the way that looks better on my door. But basically that is the last step in this DIY. It turned out so cute. I love it. I you know, needed a new wreath for my front door because I had taken down my Easter wreath and it was kind of bare. So this is going to be a great replacement. Isn't that pretty? I think it turned out so well. The shells really glued down tightly to that anchor. So hopefully they will stay in place. And they really have. Um, I made this last year and it looks good as new. I know I haven't seen the anchors this year, so I don't know if they did not bring those back, but I think it would look really good with the seashell one that they have this year if you want to substitute the anchor out for something else. If you're enjoying today's video, I'd really appreciate it if you hit that like button. It always helps. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel, please do. Okay, next DIY, I wanted to do something with a shore living garden stake. And I found this great like directional arrow one. And I thought we could make a cute little sign. I don't really like the colors, but I thought we could make it our own. So I'm gonna use one of these little, I love these little signs from the Dollar Tree. A round one would be the perfect size for that little yard stake. It was cut a little crazy. So I'm just giving it a quick sand for the frame. And I, I like the ivory frame. I don't think I really need the wood bead hanger on this one. I think it might be a little too much. So I just go ahead and cut that off. I just wanna make a cute little kind of, nautical sign with the directional arrows, but I want to do it like coastal beachy colors, right? And I don't have like any blue burlap, but that's kind of what I was thinking was I wanted like a beachy blue burlap. So I don't have it, so let's make it. I picked up some of these tote bags at Dollar Tree. I actually liked them so much, I think I ordered a whole case of them and had them shipped to my store for free, but I have been able to find them recently at the stores. And I'm just gonna cut off the front of one of the bags to give me a sheet of that white fabric. It's not burlap per se, but it's got a nice texture. And then I just lay that on top of the actual sign 
And then I'm using an ink pen to draw out the shape, trying to hold it in place. So I'll know where to cut it. It's not gonna have to be a perfect cut around the edges because I do plan to put some Dollar Tree rope there. So if we can get it like relatively close, I think that's gonna work. So I draw that on there and then I'm just gonna simply cut this bag out to size. This is the first time I think I've crafted with this fabric, but big fan. It cut really well. I like the fact that it was a little bit transparent, kind of made it easier to work with because I could see through it a little bit. I think that's gonna fit in there nicely for a blue background. You could always paint the wood back there blue too. I just kind of wanted a texture of a blue fabric. So now that we have it all cut out, I'm gonna paint it by mixing curvy and blue with white to give myself that really light beachy blue that I love to craft with. And then we're just gonna simply paint the fabric. Kind of going all over, making sure it is good and saturated all the way through with the blue paint. And like, I'm not using chalk paint, I'm just using cheap acrylic paint. And it actually did a really good job on this. Gonna start drying that with my heat gun. I also kind of go over it with a baby wipe to kind of um, suck up any excess paint that I might not need and kind of smooth it all out. But that's how it turned out, our little blue fabric background for this. Now, this is the yard stake or the garden stake. And I was a little worried because it's attached to the letter and to the little compass star on there. But I just kind of use some pliers and kind of rock it back and forth. Now, maybe I should have been a little bit more careful because I did kind of mutilate my star. Um, and this was the only one I had, so, but we're going to make it work. I use some pliers to try to like straighten it out a little bit, but there is a small hole in it, but that's okay. It's going to add to the charm, right? <laughs> I do attempt to repair it with a little bit of spackle, but using spackle on metal is always kind of a hit or a miss, but I thought I could kind of at least fill in the hole because I'm gonna paint this anyway. I wanted to do like a white on blue design with this. So I'm gonna paint this white. So using spackle on it first is no big deal. I got it as good as I'm gonna get it. And then I'm just gonna go over the whole thing with ivory. And you could spray paint this as well, like ivory or white. It'd be really easy to do. I was wanting quickness and, and our humidity here, the, the spray paint doesn't always dry quickly. So I go over it with one coat. That's about how good coverage you can get with one coat of ivory. So definitely gonna need a, another coat all over to cover up that blue that it was before. And if you like that blue color, you could always do something with that too, putting it on like a contrasting color background or maybe even using some of the Shore Living fabric as a background too. I just wanted the light blue and like ivory combination because the frame of that original sign is ivory too. I thought it would work well together. So here is our original sign. Here is our blue fabric. Did fray a tiny bit, but that's okay. I'm gonna cover up the edges again, but I am gonna just trim off any extra strings that I can. And we're just gonna attach this to the back of that sign with a layer of Mod Podge. You know, fairly thick, so it'll kind of seep all the way through the fabric, gluing that in place. I'm gonna be gluing that yard stake to the front of that, so I wanna make sure that everything is good and secure. I kind of smooth that all out with a baby wipe, spreading out all the Mod Podge, cleaning up any of the excess, and give that a quick dry with my heat gun. Now it does have slats in it, so I decided to kind of go with that and kind of cut the fabric with my razor blade into the little slats. I don't know if I really cut through the fabric, but at least it kind of pushed it down into the little seams to kind of make it look like slatted board anyway. Just another little, little texture to the project. I thought might as well, it's already like that. And then using some of the white nautical rope, I think this is the thinner 11 foot, I'm just gonna glue that at the border between the frame 
and the fabric we cut out. It's going to give another little coastal or nautical touch to this, and it definitely goes with the color scheme. So just kind of one section at a time, and we'll have the seam be right here at the bottom. And I really like how the colors turn out on this. I think that I, anytime you can do like an ivory or a white against the blue, I think it looks so beachy and fun. And I haven't decided. I think I might use this in, indoors. I did need something to glue it to though because like the star kind of sits up a little bit. So I'm just cutting down like a Jenga block from the Dollar Tree a little bit with my miter scissors. And I always have those linked in my Amazon shop below. I love those things. And then we can glue the little like compass star to it. Now I learned my lesson with the metal yard stake that we used in a previous DIY, the octopus. I used hot glue, it totally did not work with the metal. So I'm using Dollar Tree super glue, but with a tiny bit of hot glue in the middle just to get us started, trying to keep the two different kinds of glue separated. And then I just sit the metal yard stake on top of the Jenga block. And you just have to give it a little bit of time to dry when you're working with the super glue versus the hot glue. But that totally fixed my octopus when I went to fix it. So I thought I would make this one a little smarter. Now we cut the original hanger off. So I'm going to use, I have a million of these sawtooths now from all of the canvas DIYs we've done. I'm just going to hammer one into the back of the sign. Because I didn't really want like a big frilly hanger on this with the wood beads. I just wanted something very simple. And this is how it turned out. I think it's really cute. What do you guys think? Just another fun way to DIY with these little yard stakes from the Dollar Tree. Just be careful when you're trying to remove them from the stakes. They do have these again this year. Just a really quick, easy, shore living DIY. Now on the next DIY, I'm gonna be using glass stickers. I haven't seen them yet with the Shore Living line this year, but they do have coastal glass stickers that should work to sub for this. Now, my Dollar Tree's just got these pots and I think they're so pretty. I don't think they're Shore Living line, but the color kind of reminded me of something I would like with my coastal decor. So I thought we could make it really colorful and fun by adding some of these glass stickers from the Shore Living line. These are very colorful, and I thought that would be a nice contrast against that like mint green color of the metal pot. It's also got a great texture on there. And we're just gonna layer that up with these little coral stickers. Now it is, you know, a rather big pot, so I didn't think one package was gonna be enough. So we're gonna use two packages and kind of just space these out, just peeling and sticking. Now, the only thing I was concerned about here was whether they were going to stay put with that texture on there. Um, and so I do end up having to seal them down a little bit because I want this to be able to hold up if I want to use this inside or outside. Now, there was like little starfish, bubbles, little coral pieces. I'm just going to go ahead and use those as well. Why not? I ended up using almost all of the two packages because I have them fairly close together, just kind of alternating the different pieces of coral. And I end up using all but one. And I am gonna use some of the tiny pieces again to kind of fill up some of the open spaces up top. And I think this is really colorful and fun. This would be, I think, so pretty with some colorful flowers for spring. I don't have any yet, but I'll show you what I end up doing with it to start with anyway. And so I'm gonna make sure they're all kind of pushed down as good as I can get them. And then I'm gonna go over it with Matte Mod Podge. I'm using the Matte Mod Podge because the pot itself was really glossy and all of the glass stickers were really glossy too. So I kind of wanted to tone that down a little bit with that matte finish. And I also wanna make sure that these are all sealed down and they're not just going to peel off or you know start coming up. So I go all the way around with that, sealing that down with Mod Podge. And I think this color on this pot is so pretty, I love it. Once I get that on and dry, I go in with another coat, just kind of all over, 
because again, I want to make sure that they are going to stay down. Super speed mode on that. And I think that's going to work. So I gave it a good dry and you can see it's not near as shiny as it was before compared to like the inside of the pot. This is what I'm going to put in there. This is just a boxwood plant that I have from Target. These are their little $5 plants, but they go on sale too. You have to watch that. Sometimes you can get them for like $3.75 and stuff like that. And then I'm going to use some of the Shore Living Coastal Picks. I'm going to use two of the like bluish green seahorse ones and then two of like the long cone shell ones. The reason I paired these together is because they're both green. I noticed that the other seahorse and the other shell one are more brown with their greenery and I didn't really want any brown with this project. So I think this boxwood plant is going to fit nicely inside the pot. It's a nice big size. I'm going to leave it in the pot. They're kind of permanent, but you can't really add greenery to it. Whatever they use for foam is like they kind of glue that down in there at Target. And so there's enough room around the pot just to add my little picks on the outside of the pot, which is going to make it easier if I want to switch this up and add some flowers in there. And then I could use the coastal picks in the colorful flowers. So just taking all the stickers off of those, I thought we'd just alternate like a seahorse on each side like that. And then the little shells on the opposite sides here, alternating them as well. Just kind of mixing all that greenery and seaweed in with the boxwood just to make it look a little bit more coastal and fun. And then to cover up the pot and stuff, I don't want you to be able to see this. I'm going to use some red moss. I actually got this at Goodwill. It says it's Halloween decoration. But when I saw it, I had to get it because it's just like, um, you know, like reindeer moss from the Dollar Tree, but it's red. So I thought that might be a little bit more colorful. But you could totally use whatever you have to kind of fill in. I'm just going around just the rim of the pot, anywhere that you might be able to see that pot from the Target plant. And I'm probably going to switch this out for flowers because I think it would be way prettier um, with colorful flowers in there to match all those colorful coral pieces on the outside of the pot. But this is how it looks for now. And just another idea of what you can do with those glass stickers from the Shore Living line at Dollar Tree. And those beautiful picks. I love those picks from the Shore Living line. The seahorse, of course, is my favorite, but this is how it looks with the Target plant inside. And I displayed this next to my front door on a little table. It turned out so cute and held up really well. Now for the next DIY, you're going to need a mermaid sign. I don't see them this year with Shore Living, but they do have one that would work in the crafter square section. For this DIY, we're going to use one of the little kind of standing up wood mermaids from the Dollar Tree. And then one of these little tag signs with like the coral pattern on it. And we're going to put these together and make a really pretty uh, beach DIY. This is probably one of my favorite shore living DIYs. I kind of want my mermaid to look like driftwood. So what I did was I just mixed some ivory paint with some uh, antique wax by Waverly to give me that like, you know, grayish brown color. And I go all over my little mermaid. I also go over her starfish that she's holding just because it's a little hard to get that out of her hand and I don't want to break any of the wood. Once I get it on, I just wipe off the excess, kind of leaving like a stain of that color to get us started. I mix up a little bit more of that same paint and then I'm also going to just paint the little wood border all the way around the little cork sign. I'm not a big fan of these tag signs, but I do love the coral pattern on this one. And so I think we can make it work. I kind of wanted to make it look like the little mermaid is swimming in the ocean. And so I thought I would just kind of give this a coordinating um, frame. I'm going to wipe off the excess on that as well. And then I wanted to stress our little mermaid a little bit 
with some ivory paint and a chunky brush, kind of just kind of going all over. I do have plans for her tail, so I don't really have to do that part, but just kind of in one direction, finish that off with a baby wipe to give me that distressed coastal farmhouse vibe. And I'm going to do the same thing along the borders of the little tag sign that we just painted. Okay, now it's time to make this look like an ocean. So I'm going to tape off the areas that we just painted. And we are going to paint the cork board to make it look like the ocean. Um, I'm mixing a couple colors together. I really wanted a light blue. I mixed like Caribbean blue and ivory together to give me this really light blue. It's about the same color as the cloudless acrylic that you can get at Walmart. And just using one of the tiny brushes from Dollar Tree, I'm just getting as close as I can to the coral because I really like that and I don't mind that having like the brown background, but I do want the rest of the sign to make it look like the ocean. So it's okay, it doesn't have to be perfect, but if you get it pretty close in there, you're gonna get that beautiful coral design and you didn't even have to paint it on there. So that's pretty cool. Now I do kind of want it to look like, you know, imperfect, like underwater feel. So I just use my tiny brush. I'm gonna get lots of brush strokes like that, but that's okay. It's gonna kind of go with the vibe that I'm going for on that. So I just finished painting the whole thing and I'm just going to do that one coat of blue all over. Just touching up any areas that weren't quite even. And that is the final result for our little ocean tag. That looks pretty cool. And I'm going to clean that up a little bit and we can start working on decorating this mermaid. Isn't she going to be, well, she's going to be beautiful. She's not beautiful yet. I'm gonna go ahead and repaint her little starfish ivory. It's just easier to paint it, repaint it, than try to take it off or avoid it, if you know what I mean. And I gave her just a little bleached ivory starfish in her hand. Now, I was trying to think of what I could do for her tail. I decided I wanted like this tail part of her tail to be like ivory. I do have plans to cover that with something, but I do kind of want it to have a little bit of an ivory background. And at this point, I thought it might be easier to go ahead and attach her to the sign because we have lots of decorating to do on our little mermaid. So I just do a little hot glue all over and glue her to the ocean. I'm going to kind of sit her off to the side here so you can see that coral pattern. Kind of looks like she's swimming out of the sign, but like looking back and attach that with hot glue. Now this is my plan for her tail. I wanted to do like little fish scales or mermaid scales on her tail with seashells. These are those little tiny seashells that you get at the Dollar Tree. And I'm just gluing them upside down and it looks like, you know, like a fish scale like shape, right? Um, they have these year round in the little glass bottles. Um, they should be pretty easy to find. Doesn't matter what color. Um, you're using because pretty much the inside of all of them is going to be a similar color and I found it was kind of like putting together a puzzle um, just trying to find the different shapes and sizes what's going to fit especially like on this little skinny part of her tail but we're going to go all the way to like the area that I painted ivory and kind of just working one row at a time and just slightly overlapping the layer below it to give you that cool design. This looks so cool. It's one of my favorite short living DIYs. I'm looking at it right now in my living room and it is just so beautiful. And I think the seashells are probably why. So again, I'm just gonna keep kind of puzzle piecing it together, working one row at a time, just all the way up to her little waist. Um, you, you do notice that she does have like a hole in her hair there where the hanger was. I do have plans for her mermaid hair. Um, you can kind of see out there to the side what my plans are with that. Um, and we're just going to decorate her and make her look really cool. So just finishing this up, this does take a little bit of time and patience. 
to get her tail covered with the seashells, but definitely worth it. A lot of times seashell projects can look really tacky, but this one actually looks really pretty. Now for her tail, I wanted something ivory to kind of go with those shells, but something like straight lines. So I'm using Dollar Tree rope. It's gonna give you that coastal rope feel. I just unwind into thirds and then I unwind it again until it's actually just the individual fibers of the rope. And then I'm just gonna cut that, unwind it, hot glue it down, and I wanna cover her entire little tail fin here with that. I'm cutting it longer on purpose because I could always trim it up at the end, but I wanna make sure that she has really good coverage. So I just kinda do one little piece at a time, unwinding everything and gluing this on. This gave me a really interesting texture and it is another like coastal vibe because it is made out of rope. So I think that's super fun. I'm gonna go in and just trim it up close to the shape of the tail fin now with just my scissors, just trying to get as close as I can to the edge of the tail. And I did find that it was easier to do all of this decorating because I had the mermaid attached. You would think it would make it harder, but it just kind of provided some more stability to the project so I can really kind of work with it. So that looks cool. Now for her hair, we're gonna use one of these little child Lua skirts. Our luau skirts from the Dollar Tree. If you, um, they have these every summer. If you don't have one or they don't have them out at your store, you could always use any kind of raffia as well. Or some of you guys have even done it with like orange yarn, which is really cute. It's gonna give you that aerial vibe, right? From Little Mermaid. And I thought we would just make her hair with this, right? Um, I'm just gonna cut off a piece of the grass skirt that's gonna cover the very top of her head. And we're just gonna start hot gluing this down. I'm only hot gluing it, you know, to the areas that I can. So the areas that actually have wood hair. And I'm gonna wanna make it longer than her hair was on the sign. So I'm gonna go ahead and trim off the top, which is gonna trim off that little twine piece and give me the perfect like cut up there. And you can always like, you know, work a piece at a time and kind of fill it in. I cut off another piece to do the same thing here on the back of her hair, cutting that down to size along her little hairline. And she's gonna have some flowing raffia hair. Kind of like pulling that all down and giving her a little haircut. It is pretty long though. I do have like just, um, a little bit of like baldness here. So I do add just a few pieces of that raffia that we trimmed off. And I also had a little piece here that was kind of still exposed, but I wanna cover like all of her hair with this raffia. Now it looks like it's pretty good coverage. Um, I did end up cutting off that little point because I did find that it was kind of weird. It was kind of sticking out a little bit, but that wood is thin enough to cut with scissors for sure. I kind of want it to be flowing down like around, like underneath of her arm. And I also want her to have a little bit of a hairstyle. So I do take a couple more of those pieces of raffia that we trimmed off. And I'm going to kind of use that part to kind of wrap her hair down a little bit. And then I thought she definitely needed like a seashell to decorate her hair. And this is, again, those little seashells in the glass bottles. I like to organize mine of those little toy organizers from um, Dollar Tree. That way they're easy to get out and easy to craft with. Trying to figure out how many seashells in her hair she needs. I decided on two. Now that little piece that I added of hair, um, that's where I put like the seashells in there. I'm kind of using that to help guide the rest of the hair like to the back. So I glue that part down first on the back of the sign. I want her hair to be flowing though. I just wanted it to have a little bit of shape. I'm gonna go in now and reattach that twine hanger that came with the sign. And this is how she turned out. 
I still have this displayed in my living room. It's so pretty. I know my store still has the tag signs because they didn't sell very well. And they just display them in Crafter Square. But really any kind of sign in the back would work for that. Okay, next DIY. Check out these little burlap stretch canvases. These are new. I've only seen them at my largest Dollar Tree. And I got a bunch of them and I went there again today and they have them again. And they're so great for coastal. I love burlap. Now it's a five by seven frame. So I thought, you know, I could just buy a frame and this is a new frame as well. They had this at my store with the Mother's Day, but I thought it looked a little bit coastal. It looks like a wood with like a white print on it. And I thought we could just simply frame one of these little shore living sand dollars and see if I can put all of these things together. Um, I don't really like when the little sand dollars are gray and these are left over from last year. Mine last year were a lot more gray than they are this year, but I'm just going to paint it with a couple coats of ivory just to brighten that up and make it look like sun bleached. What I want to do is mount that on the burlap. This is a really easy DIY. I wasn't sure though, because the frame, you know, is not going to be deep enough for that uh, burlap canvas, but I think we can make it work. So I take the back off and remove the glass out of the 5x7 frame. And you can use probably any 5x7 frame from Dollar Tree or wherever. And then I'm going to use my pliers to just pull out the little staples because those won't work anymore for what we're doing. Then I was wondering if I could just pop like the little burlap canvas in here. And look at that. It is a perfect fit. So I think this is going to work. Pretty cool, huh? Now I noticed that when I put the back on, even though it's like a light color of, um, you know, paper, like wood paper, it looks dark. See how that looks darker in the center than it does around the edges? And so I thought I want to use the back because I want something to be able to sit this on a shelf. So I'll just brighten it up a little bit by painting the back cardboard that same ivory color and see if that makes it a little bit brighter. So I just simply paint all over. I didn't really want to make a stand for this if I could reuse that. I also take some ivory and just distress the frame ever so lightly um, and follow that up with a baby wipe. I don't want too much distress, but I just wanted to add that coastal vibe of the frame, which I think it kind of already has. So I think that looks pretty good. We can start putting this thing together. I'm just going to um, try to attach the back to the burlap canvas because um, like the staples wouldn't go around this because the canvas is gonna kind of be sticking out a little bit in the back, which is fine, you won't be able to see it. So I just hot glue that to the back of the canvas and that actually worked out really well. That way I can still use the little um, thing to make it stand up or you could use the hangers on there as well. I think I'm gonna do it sideways. I think that'll look cool. I'm just gonna attach the little sand dollar from the Dollar Tree with some hot glue right there in the center. And I love things like this um, glued onto the burlap. That's when I realized I am gonna have to glue uh, the burlap into the frame. I thought it was gonna kind of stay put, but no such luck. So I just do a small bead of hot glue all around the inside edges and then glue that back down on top of the burlap canvas. And I think it looks really good and this was so easy to put together. Here is our little burlap and sand dollar. Three items from the Dollar Tree, just putting them all together and I think it turned out really cute. Now I think these will look really cute in the new wood frames as well. And I kind of did a larger version in this of one of my new DIY videos this year where I display three of the sand dollars. And it's just so easy, fun and coastal. Um, takes just a few minutes to put together. Hey guys, I wanted to let you know about memberships on my channel. For $4.99 a month, you can get early ad-free access to my videos. It's a quick, easy way to support me here on YouTube. Now for the next DIY, I'm using glass stickers again. So if I still have one of these, I will try scanning it in to make it printable so you could recreate. But that's what I used for this one. We're going to use a shore living glass sticker, that beautiful seahorse, and then this beautiful beachy blue candle. This is just one of the tall candles they have all the time at Dollar Tree. I love this color though. 
when you peel off the plastic, it does leave like a really sticky adhesive. So I always like to use a little bit of Goo Gone on that, but then you kind of have to cl clean the glue, the, the Goo Gone off so that you can secure the sticker to it. But these glass stickers are so fun and it's perfect for a glass candle, right? I'm just gonna use the seahorse itself. I think the colors are so pretty on it. It's the perfect size for one of these long candles and just peel and stick the glass sticker on there. I'm trying to get it on there right the first time because I don't really want to weaken the adhesive on the sticker. And then I wanted to give it like a little bit of a coastal touch in addition. And so I found this at the Dollar Tree the other day. It is like a macrame cotton rope. And I like it because it's like kind of the same kind of color and feel as the white rope from Dollar Tree, but on a much smaller scale. And I thought that would look really cute wrapped around it, the candle, kind of like you would do with twine, but this time with a little white rope. So I just start in the back here of my candle and hot glue that macrame rope to it. And we're just gonna go around several times until I think it looks good. And you don't have to worry about like, you can light this candle because it's all secure in a jar. I am gonna go ahead and put some of this macrame rope on the top as well. But since I'm securing it to the side of the jar, it's not like um, it's gonna catch on fire or anything, I don't think. So I hope not. <laughs> We're gonna glue that here at the top kind of down a little bit just to kind of cover the very top of the candle. These candles aren't always the most beautiful on the sides. I always try to pick out kind of the best side for the front whenever I'm DIYing with them. And I go around this one about the same, I think four times. And I thought that just provided another little coastal touch to this quick and easy shore living DIY, aren't those colors so pretty together? Here is our little seahorse shore living candle DIY. I think you turned out really sweet. I love using those candles for quick DIYs. Now on the next shore living DIY, I guess it's not really shore living. You really don't need anything from the shore living, but we're gonna be making this from scratch and I absolutely love how it turned out. We're gonna use just some of these long wood plain signs from the Dollar Tree and the raw wood, wood hanging decor, and cut off a couple of sides. What we're gonna do is we're gonna make our own sign. Instead of doing like a thrifted sign or a Dollar Tree sign, I am gonna make my own sign out of wood from the Dollar Tree. So I got some more of that thin craft wood from the Dollar Tree. And I'm just gonna cut out two like little support braces here for the back to make this a stronger sign. Now you could also use um, Dollar Tree wood rulers, which I've been having trouble finding lately. I haven't been able to find them in a while or whatever you've got, but I'm doing the craft wood because I want this to be really secure because what we're gonna do is make this into a very heavy duty sign. I just go right underneath the holes for the hanger and hot glue that in place. And then we're gonna go ahead and do this on the other side too, making a small like pallet board sign. And I'm gonna be attaching heavy things to this. That's why I kinda of want it to be heavy duty and strong. The first thing we're gonna do is paint this blue. And I'm doing this basically just as a background cause we're gonna be adding blue items to this and I, if any shows through I want to have a blue background behind it so I'm just using Caribbean blue acrylic and going all over the front of our little DIY sign front. Now what I want to do is a school of sharks so I will share this image as well. I just printed this out on regular paper um, just because I wanted like a silhouette of a shark swimming. So this is just regular paper and I'm just cutting that out. What I wanted to do was kind of do like a burlap shark and like blue pebbles for the ocean around it and make a cool scene. 
Now, I had one of y'all tell me that sharks do not swim in schools, but sometimes they do. We have shark migrations that go by where we live every year, and they definitely swim in a school. There are a ton of them that swim together. Super fun. So I'm just taking some burlap that I had from Walmart. You can totally use the new burlap from the Dollar Tree. I printed out three of them, but then after I cut one out, I said, you know, why don't I just cut them all out together? Um, that way, less work, right? So I just used spray adhesive to glue that onto the burlap. And I have three pieces of burlap that I can cut down at the same time. I just want three burlap sharks shark swimming silhouettes now one of you guys just told me on one of my recent um, videos that if you mod podge your burlap first and let it dry before you cut it you're not going to get any fraying so that might be a great tip to use on this one because of some of the little pieces of this i did have some fraying on this for sure I tried not to get too detailed of a shark silhouette, just like that. The third piece I had glued on, so you can see one of my tails definitely frayed and completely fell off. So definitely glue it first, or you can also use the burlap bags from the Dollar Tree that have that coating on them. They're super easy to cut and they do not fray. I think we can make it work. And I just want them swimming together in a school, like up my sign. And we're just gonna Mod Podge those onto the blue painted sign. So basically we're kind of doing um, the burlap first so that we can add all of the ocean pebbles all around it. But I definitely wanted to have the burlap like attached directly to the sign and not onto the pebbles. So I put Mod Podge under the burlap, lay the little burlap shark on top, and then Mod Podge over, making sure it is definitely good and secure. And we're going to go ahead and do the last one that kind of has the broken tail, kind of putting it back together if we can. It's going to add to the rustic charm of this project, right? <laughs> and Mod Podge all over all three. I give them a quick dry. And these are the little blue pebbles that I was talking about. These are from the Dollar Tree. I love to craft with these. I think they are super fun to craft with. And I've used them in a lot of DIY projects. I thought this would be a great opportunity to try to do that. Now, since I need to kind of have a tight outline around my sharks, I'm gonna start by using hot glue first and just do a bead of hot glue around my shark and just kind of go ahead and do a row of the little pebbles around it. I won't have to do like detailed work like that anywhere else, but definitely around the silhouette of my shark. I kind of have to do it with hot glue, kind of one section at a time, just outlining that out, kind of performing kind of making a little wall of shells there. That looks good. Now I just need to go ahead and do the same thing here on the other two little sharks with pebbles and hot glue. Then we can go in and glue the pebbles to the rest of the sign with a little bit easier method. And I'm gonna be using tacky glue, which is what I love to use for this. It's a nice strong glue. It's available from a Dollar Tree and it does a great job at holding on to these pebbles, like kind of some of these heavier projects. So just finishing up shark number three. Kind of looks cool like that, right? And this is the tacky glue that I use from Dollar Tree. And I'm just gonna start covering all of the blue parts of our sign with a thick layer of that. And then we can just start sprinkling on the little blue pebbles until we cover the entire front of the sign with blue pebbles. Definitely an easier way of gluing on than with hot glue. And it's definitely gonna be durable as well. You might wanna put something down first so you don't make too big of a mess but it's pretty easy to do this. 
My favorite part is that cool texture the blue pebbles give the art piece. Um, and the contrast against just the rugged burlap of the sharks. Just a little bit of a silhouette. And I think this turned out so pretty. One of my favorite sea creature DIYs for sure. Once I get it all on, I'm going to use some of the spray glue, also from Dollar Tree. It's a little aerosol can and spray on top. So we have glue on the bottom and we have glue on the top of our pebbles. And just spray that all over till it is wet with glue. And then you're going to have to let this sit to dry. I let mine sit for a while and look, it all stayed on. So that's what I was going for. One piece fell off. Okay, so more of that Dollar Tree craft wood. I'm gonna use it for the top, bottom, and sides of this to make this kind of a boxy sign. Um, I'm not necessarily making a frame. I guess I am, but the frame's gonna go behind the rocky structure. So I am just cutting down a piece for the top trying to cut it down to size that there'll be enough room for the width of the board for the sides to fit. Now I'm gonna go ahead and paint in distress this wood now before I attach it. I just use Antique Wax by Waverly mixed with a little ivory, gives me this like um, really kind of a driftwood color, I like it. And I am just going to do that all over the wood pieces, kind of wiping off the excess with a baby wipe so you can still kind of see that great wood grain behind it. We have our two side pieces and we have our two top pieces for a little shark sign. Once I get them painted that color, I just go in with straight antique wax by Waverly in a chunky brush and give it a faux distressed wood grain. I always love to do that for coastal farmhouse DIYs. I think it looks really like driftwood, something that should be on the side of a cool little coastal art piece like this. I'm gonna give it a good dry and now we can start putting this together. Now the braces, remember I did not go all the way to the ends because I wanted to leave room um, for the sides of this. But I'm definitely doing this part after everything else dried. I just thought it would be easier. So taking a side piece, I just do a bead of hot glue all along. And then just gluing it on the back of our sign flush with the outside edges to create like a little boxy sign, if you know what I mean. It, I'm going to make this to hang on my wall. So this is going to kind of push it out from the wall. Definitely make it look like a thicker piece of art for sure. And I'm just gonna attach the other side as well. I went end to end with my sides. I cut my inner pieces a little bit shorter so they would fit right inside. And just like I glue the sides, I'm just gonna glue it all the way flush with the edges, trying to make the um, corners square too, attaching them together with a little bit of hot glue. And the final side of our little box sign. Now I did have a little bit of cracks. My cuts were not perfect there on the top and the bottom of my sign. So that's okay. I just fill that in with a little bit of spackle. And I can always touch that up once it dries. with just some more antique wax by Waverly, kind of distressing it like we did the rest of the edges of the sign. So this is what we have at this point. We have the boxy sign with the beautiful driftwood sides. I'm gonna hang it where like the sharks are swimming like up the wall. And I think it's really pretty. What do you guys think about this? This is kind of a picture I had in my head. Not sure if it would turn out, but I really like the end result. I love the texture of all those blue pebbles and again, the burlap. Super cute, but be careful cutting it out again. You might want to Mod Podge it first. I think that's a great tip. I'm going to have to do that the next time I need a fine cut of uh, some burlap. 
Okay guys, you made it all the way to the final reveal. Thank you so much for joining me today for these 15 Shore Living Dollar Tree Beach DIYs. If you enjoyed today's video, be sure to hit that like button. Don't forget to comment your favorite DIY in the comments below. That really helps me um, figure out what you guys like to DIY or like to watch. And if you haven't subscribed, I'd really appreciate it. Enjoy the final reveal. Sure. 
what's right in front of us if we just hold on tight. This vision that I saw is getting closer every dawn. Ooh, we are dreamers of the shore when we can't read the sky. Thank you so much for watching all the way to the end of today's video. That always helps my video so much. I also want to give a huge thank you and shout out to all of my Crafty Beach Bum members for supporting my channel. Thank you to Karen O'Haran, Melinda Elizabeth, Jamie Job, Susan Edmonds, Carrie R., Tracy Knight, Nancy Wunner, Julie Miller, Janae Farrington, Pamelia Wren, Maria Grace, Donna Schreiner, Sandy C., and Lindsay. Thank you so much. I really appreciate each and every one of you. And if you would like more Shore Living DIYs, I've got you covered. Check out this video right here. Until next time, happy crafting.